This is the final video in the series of videos about PowerPoint 2013 Unit C, and we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 64 and 65. As you work to create an interesting presentation, your goal should include making your slides visually appealing. Sometimes plain text can come across as dull and unexciting in a presentation. Word art is a set of decorative text styles or text effects you can apply to any text object to help, your, uh, help direct the attention of your audience to a certain piece of information. You can use word art in two different ways. You can apply a word art text style to an existing text object that converts the text into word art, or you can create a new word art object. The word art text styles and effects include text shadows, reflections, glows, bevels, 3D rotations, and transformations. Taking a look now at step one, it tells us that we want to go to the slide eight thumbnail. So it tells us to click the slide eight thumbnail, and that is in the thumbnails pane. And then we want to go to our insert tab on the ribbon, and then we're going to click on the word art button in the text group. And that is with the little sideways A here. And of course, notice that we have several different A's now. And of course, this is the word art gallery that appears, and it displays 20 word art text styles. Of course, a quick tip as well, to format any text with word art style, you can select the text, and then you can click the Drawing Tools Format tab on the ribbon, and then you can click a word art style option in the word art styles group. In step two, it tells us that we want to click the Graduate Fill Orange Accent 1 Reflection. And that is this one right here. It's in the second row. So when we click on this, we now notice that a text object appears in the middle of the slide displaying sample text with the word art style that we've just selected. Now of course notice that the Drawing Tools Format tab, which is right up here, uh, is now opened up on the ribbon. In step three, it tells us that we want to click the edge of the word art text object, and when the pointer on here changes to a four-headed arrow with a pointer. We want to drag the text object to a blank area of the slide. So we're just going to drag this right over here. And then on step four, it tells us that we want to click on the more button uh, in the word art styles group. So now we have our word art styles group right here in the middle. We want to click on the more button. And then we can hover over with our mouse button all the different word art styles. So we can see how uh, the different styles of word art and how it looks. But ultimately, it tells us here um, that we're going to click on the fill orange accent one. And of course, that is the one that has uh, the outline background one and the hard shadow accent one. That is this one right here that is in the third row and the third column. And that is the one that we want to click on. Now the word art style changes the sample text in the word art text object. And the new word art style is applied to the text object. Now in step five, it tells us that we want to drag to select the text your text here, so we're going to select this text, and then um, once we have that, we're going to click the decrease font size button uh, on there. And of course, uh, when we do that, our mini toolbar should appear. There's our mini toolbar, and this little A right here, we want to click on this until it reaches to 44. We want the font size to be 44. Once we have that, we can start typing, and we want to type best value, and then press our enter key, and then type of the summer. And then we'll notice that the text has, is now a little bit smaller, and that we do have two lines of text. Now on step six, it tells us that we want to click the text effects button in the word art styles group. So here we have text effects here, which is in our word art styles group. And then we want to point to transform, which is down at the bottom. 
and then we want to click in flight which is in the wrap section so here or uh, excuse me the warp section so we want to choose on in flight so there's ring inside and we want to just keep on looking until we find the in flight there's our deflate we may have to keep on looking around until we uh, see the different ones and there's in flight bottom there's our deflate and there's our inflate so we're taking a look now at the the sixth row in the first column once you have found the inflate you want to go ahead and click on it and then you want to click on a blank area of the slide just any blank area of the slide that's there and we'll notice that the inflate in fact, effect has been applied to the text object and you want to compare your screen with what you see on your screen right now and as well as figure C-15. Then on step 7 it tells us that we want to click on the reading view button so the button down here on the status bar that looks like a book and of course this will take us to our PowerPoint slide here then we want to go down here to our next button which is on the status bar and it tells us that we want to click on next until we hit slide 13 which that is the one which had our chart to it. Once we have that, we're going to click on the menu button, which is between the previous and the next buttons, and we click on the menu button. Then once we click on the menu button, we want to click on end show. This will take us back to our normal view. Next, on step 8, it tells us that we want to click on the slide sorter view which is on the status bar which is right down here and then we want to click the zoom out icon which is right here until we see all 13 slides and so you should roughly be at 80 percent either 80% or you might could even go up to 70% as well depending on your screen size and resolution right now I'm at 80% uh, if you look at the text it shows it at 70% so you want to compare your screen to what looks like on here once you have this you can now click on the normal button which is on the status bar and then it tells us that we want to add your name and date as the footer to the slides so to do that we can go up to our insert tab and then header and footer and then on the slide it tells us that we want to add the date and we also want to add a footer here which has your name on it so I'm going to add my name to this and then click on and we're going to go ahead and just apply this to all and then go ahead and save your changes once you have that, you can go ahead and close down the PPTC-QST, and you're ready to upload that to Course Sites. But before finishing out this video, let's take a look on the bottom of page PowerPoint 65, and we should talk, talks to us a little bit about saving your presentation as a video. Now you can save your PowerPoint presentation as a fully uh, or a full fidelity video, which incorporates all slide timings, transitions, animations, and narrations. The video can be distributed using a disk, the web, or email. Depending on how you want to display your video, you have three resolution settings from which to choose, which is either computer and HD displays, internet and DVD, and portable devices. The large setting, computer and HD displays, which is using the screen resolution of uh, 1280 by 720, is used for viewing on a computer monitor, a projector or other high definition displays. The medium setting, which is the internet and DVD, which is an 852 by 480 resolution, is used for uploading to the web or copying to a standard DVD. The small setting for portable devices is a 424 by 240, and it's used on portable devices including portable media players such as the Microsoft Zoom. Of course, to save your presentation as a video, you click on the File tab, and then click export so we can do that here uh, real quick to show you here and click on the file tab then go to export 
and then here we have the create a video option and then of course this is where we can choose the different settings either computer and HD displays internet and DVD or the portable devices and then of course you can also choose uh, don't use recorded timings and narration or if you have those you could choose to use those as well and then of course once you get that completed you can click on create video and you are finished and that also finishes this video you are ready to move on to the assignments so go to the content area of course sites be sure to upload uh, your powerpoint presentation the pptc uh, qst uh, to the walkthrough and you're ready to move on to the next assignment